meteorology department, so... Oh, yeah, there's McDonald's store. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, I mentioned to the people that worked across the... Uh, from the terminal with me to the coach that uh, the best piece of advice that I could give you at this point would be before you step over this pavement to walk across the road, look to your right. The traffic here, we drive on the correct side of the road, which is known to you as the left-hand side of the road. Now, if you remember that, you're going to go home in one piece. If you don't remember that, we don't know how you're going home. <laughs> Please don't step off the pavement anywhere without first checking to your right to make sure that one of these yellow cabs isn't going to knock you over because they don't know the road rules. So you must assume that nobody else knows. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm driving on your side of the road, look at this, I'm just trying to make you feel at home. <laughs> I just hope a big semi-trailer doesn't come over the crest here. Now we only do this on uh, multi-lane highways and things like that. But... We're about uh, 25 minutes from uh, your accommodation. Give or take a day or two because of traffic conditions. But, uh, about uh, 25 to 30 minutes and we should be at uh, Newman College, which is one of the uh, major colleges on the campus of uh, Melbourne University. I'm going to just briefly give you a chronological breakdown of the uh, settlement here in Melbourne. And, uh, and then when we get into town, when we're looking at different things, I can uh, tell you where which direction you should be heading. We're to the north of the city now. South is out to the right-hand side of the coach. East is in front of the coach. And west, of course, must be behind us. It's the only one we've got left, isn't it? West. We're on the third largest volcanic plain in the world. You have a larger one in the United States, and there's a larger one in India. But uh, this western, northwestern side of Melbourne but uh, the city is built on the fringe of is the third largest volcanic plain in the world. So there's a bit of useless trivia for you. <laughs> now you'll see parts of the skyline, the city skyline, as we're driving in along this freeway, known as the Tullamarine Freeway because the airport uh, that you just arrived at is known as Tullamarine or the Melbourne Jetport, situated in the area, the uh, Shire of Tullamarine. And really, it's, uh, I'd have to say it's just about God's country here because I wasn't born too far from here. Actually, we go through where I was born and I've lived on this northern fringe of the city all my life, except for 10 years in Darwin in the Northern Territory. So it's, uh, it's a lovely part of Melbourne. The, uh, chronologically, uh, the first uh, European settlers arrived over here on this coastline, this uh, coastline that Melbourne is built on, Port Phillip Bay in the southern Bass Strait area, is uh, where John Batman sailed across from Tasmania. He was uh, an adventurer and he led a party of wealthy graziers from Tasmania that were seeking new pasture land to uh, run larger sheep herds and uh, things like that uh, in the early days, 1835. That's even before me, so it was pretty early. And uh, he sailed across here and uh, discovered the uh, entrance into uh, Port Phillip Bay and the mouth of the Yarra River, which is a large river um, that empties out into Port Phillip Bay. He found that uh, mouth and he sailed as far as he could navigate up that river uh, on a tidal influence and uh, he sailed to a series of waterfalls uh, that's as far as he could navigate and that was about six miles or so upstream of that uh, river above the waterfalls was fresh water and below it was a tidal influence from the bay and the Bass Strait area so he come ashore at that point walked up over the slope 
uh, to the north and discovered that the land was quite flat, as you can see here, and uh, and it was heavily grassed and it was a good place for grazing and such. So he declared this be the site for a village. He uh, automatically uh, sort of started uh, establishing back in Tasmania that this area was suitable for uh, settlement. People started to arrive over here and, uh, and the settlement started as an illegal settlement in 1835. So from 1835 to today, this is what you're going to see. In 1850, the small settlement uh, the which had uh, started sought separation. They sent a, uh, a nice little petition off to Queen Victoria to see if they could separate from New South Wales. All this area was governed by New South Wales at the time, which governed virtually the whole country. And, uh, and all the colonies started to break away from New South Wales and become separate states or colonies in those days. So from uh, 1850 we became the state of Victoria or the colony of Victoria. In 1851, just outside of Melbourne, to the west of us here, the world's richest alluvial gold fields were discovered. So all the miners that had accumulated at the 19 or 1849 Californian gold rush started to leave California and come over here uh, to the gold rush that was here. And this state grew enormously in the next few months. And uh, all of a sudden we had a big boom and Melbourne became, if not the richest, one of the richest cities in the British Empire because we were part of the British Empire after Cook claimed this continent uh, for the British in 1770. So Melbourne really uh, kicked on from that uh, gold rush from the 1850s onwards. Most of the big public buildings and that that you'll see and cathedrals and everything like that in and around Melbourne were constructed between that uh, period from the 18, late 1850s, 1860s onwards to around the turn of the century and, and later than that, uh, more modern buildings and that started to go. But the big boom was from the gold rush to the 1900s, you could just about say. Universities were uh, created and uh, <coughs> public buildings were built and all those sorts of things. So Melbourne became a beautiful city in that period. In 1901, the six colonies, the six states, New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, South Australia, the Western Australia and Tasmania, all got together and elected the first federal government of this country. And then we became the, uh, the Federation of Australia in 1901 with our first Prime Minister and such. From that point, Melbourne became the capital city of Australia for the next 26 years or the caretaker capital city for the next 26 years, however you want to say it. Um, that's what we became. And, uh, and in the meantime, we built a purpose-built capital city, similar to what uh, you had done in the States where you built Washington, and that became your capital city. And uh, Canberra became ours in a, an area of land that we uh, created as a territory, a small territory the Australian Capital Territory and uh, Canberra was built and the federal government moved from Melbourne in 1927 to take up residency in that uh, city of Canberra and it still resides there today. <laughs>